<laughs> Myanmar, about 200 Muslim hitchhikers and joggers heading for the food lines suffered unpleasant experiences when troops opened fire in their direction. More than half died, while the remaining half, all joggers, were reported to have continued with their jogging on one solitary foot. <laughs> Myanmar authorities said the hitchhikers and joggers got in the way of the bullets which were fired during their practice sessions. Uh, thank you, Marina. Uh, leaders of the Commonwealth in holiday mood yesterday issued a communique at the 17th Green of the Royal St Andrews Golf Club, Scotland, after an acrimonious round of golf which lasted for three days in response to the latest Libyan offer to release four deaf and blind Americans, two goats, <laughs> and the confiscated case of troops left by fleeing U.S. ambassador in return for a lifelong membership to Disneyland for Colonel Gaddafi. The drafting of the communique, the early drafts of which were initiated by the caddies, started at a 14th hole and proceeded late into the night when the Commonwealth golfers camped on the ninth green after making difficult negotiations between the water hazard and the clubhouse. Opinions differed as to whether a dangerous precedent would be created if Gaddafi was granted the lifelong membership to Disneyland. Emissaries to Gaddafi, which included Bob Hope and Jack Nicklaus, <laughs> failed to persuade Gaddafi to lower his demands and to settle for a lifelong membership with the prestigious all-female mud wrestling club of San Francisco. <laughs> Bob Hope, interviewed at the Tripoli Golf Club, said that the negotiations were quite difficult as the course had a lot of bunkers and water hazards, and as Gaddafi was playing to a handicap of 18 on the first nine and 12 on the second nine. Bob Hope said that he had instructions to put pressure on Gaddafi on the third and fourth hole, but blew out on the 6th and 7th hole when Gaddafi started to use his sawn off M16 assault rifle to putt and hand grenades to enlarge holes on the greens. <laughs> Bob Hope's offer to Gaddafi to play two above par after that was rejected by the Libyan leader who said that even his camels would have been offended by the bribe. <laughs> Early this morning, the Commonwealth leaders continued with their arduous task of completing the second 18, with the leaders teeing off according to the density of their skin pigmentation. The darker shade members of the Commonwealth complained that matters would only get worse if they had to be at the tail end of the teeing queue under the sweltering Scottish summer sun. Some progress was made in drafting the communique after breakfast on the 6th green and after the Prime Ministers of the United Kingdom, Canada and Australia birdied the 4th, 5th and 6th holes. African Commonwealth leaders complained that they were badly handicapped by the non-English speaking caddies and that they were suffering from sunburn. The Commonwealth leaders agreed to make a counter-offer to Colonel Gaddafi for a lifelong membership to three leading golf clubs in Europe that are not owned by the Japanese, a sauna club in New York frequented by midgets and jockeys, and underwriting his laundry bills for one year. <laughs> Bob Hope will present the counter offers to Gaddafi tomorrow when they meet for a stable fourth competition at the Royal Oasis Golf Club, which also doubles up as an Air Force landing strip at night and a race course for camels. <laughs> Bob Hope said that he hopes that people are not hoping too much and that the club will have rules against using rifles as putters and that caddies are not put down if they cannot retrieve golf balls from the water hazards. Rumours of more marital tremors and matrimonial possibilities in the British royal households are circulating with a spate of separate holidays among members of the royal family. Prince Philip will be having a separate holiday on the grounds of Windsor Castle, while the Queen will be having a picnic with her poodles at the back garden of the palace <laughs> Prince Philip's brand of homeliness and frankness will be put to the test during the holiday season when an influx of Japanese holiday makers descend on Windsor. <laughs> when TV3 met him yesterday, he was busy putting up his A-tent to the strains of 
rural Britannia from his Sony Mini Compo, and when asked about his reaction, said, the trouble with those Japs who gave us Pearl Harbor is that they will buy anything that doesn't move. They are like pregnant rats. They retreat <laughs> the almost ever. If these tourists even make the slightest hint of wanting to buy Windsor Castle, there'll be lots of casualties, I can tell you that. The Queen denied that just because Philip was camping in a separate part of the garden, that all was not well in the royal household. My husband and I, she said, have been going on separate holidays for years. I'd wanted to put my Edwardian king-size bed into the A-tent, but Philip was adamant it would spoil the spirit of Canberra. <laughs> we have only minor technical problems. Of course, he does shout at me from that distance and makes all kinds of rude noises, but he does come over to shake my hand to wish me good night. We are still very close. And now over to our weatherman for the latest holiday weather report. Uh, thank you, Marina. Well, folks, the weather for the week. Well, what have we got for you this week? Well, what we have for you this week is a mixed mixture of weather. We expect a build up of hot air and we expect a strong wind to come from New York. New York, over there. A steady wind coming from the United Nations building and from the Midwest will bid up in the U.S. election and we expect the campaign will create an area of high pressure. Yeah? Okay. Right. And here and here our weather balloons are over Oxford Street in London and the Champs-Élysées in Paris. Also indicate a build-up of high pressure over these areas and I'm afraid you'll have to see a similar build-up of hot air from these areas. This disgusting gas of air and vague promises will start to move over the English Channel and with a similar movement coming from the French side, we can expect depressing cloud formation. Get it? Temperatures over the Middle East. Oh, what a temperature I expected to rise. For those on holiday, I advise to avoid Iraq, Israel, and Iran, and as they are now holding a series of war festivals. Kukuracha! Yeah. The weather center in report from the CIA indicates that there would be scattered showers of missiles. Surface to surface, ground to air, air to ground, and what have you. Which are all designed to leave all of you permanently homeless. So if you are traveling by chartered flights, we have a special weather report for those who are uncharted and are passing through this airspace in the region. It's best to avoid to fly it very low or very high. You should also make sure your traveling package includes the cost of a parachute. <laughs> thank you Zainal and thank you Kairudin. That's all we have for now. Please do join us again, same time, same place, sometime before the year 2020. Good night and goodbye. <laughs>